Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Alocasia Green Velvet, also known as the Alocasia Miscalitiana, and also mistakenly known as the Alocasia Fredic. It's a very common misconception. These are often referred to as the Alocasia Fredic. Um, the Fredic is actually just the variegated version of this, um, but I'm talking about just the kind of full green version, which is known as a Miscalitiana. The Alocasia Green Velvet is a tropical plant native to Southeast Asia. They can grow up to three feet tall, averaging around two foot tall, and coincidentally make a reasonably nice house plant if you know how to care for them. So in today's video, we're gonna explain how to care for this plant, and then I'm gonna be ranking it on a scale of easy, intermediate, and hard, based on all the things this plant requires. So first of all, you can see these can grow to be quite a bushy alocasia. I'll hold mine up so you can have a bit of a look-see. Um, yeah. They can put out a decent amount of leaves compared to a lot of other alocasias that you, uh, I guess, are able to have in your home. Um, these ones can potentially, like I've got here, put out quite a few leaves. So the lighting requirements for this plant are on the higher end of this scale. Um, they're gonna want bright indirect light. As bright as you can give them without it being direct sun that burns them. So ideally close to a window that gets fairly bright light or on a window sill, provided it's not getting any direct sun for any length of time. Or alternatively, put them under some grow lights. Um, I have mine under grow lights, but it also gets pretty bright indirect light throughout the day as well. And like I said, a bit of sun's fine. Um, ideally, if it's going to have sun, it had better to be just a little bit of morning or afternoon sun, not full sun throughout the day because it will crisp up and burn. These plants can't handle direct sun, but they do like the bright light. So when it comes to watering these, they're not as simple as some other house plants where you can just do like a water once a week and you don't really have to check it too much. You just go by the once a week watering routine and, and the plant kind of manages itself from there. Allocations especially, um, are a little bit more demanding on how they're watered. So these guys like it quite wet most of the time, but they don't want to be soaking wet all the time, if that makes sense at all. Basically, um, you want to water them so their soil is quite wet, uh, so fully drain the pot through. Then you want to leave it and wait until it's almost dry. When it's at the point where it's nearly dry, but not fully dry, then you water again. You don't want to let these guys fully dry out like you can do with most other plants. Um, when the soil fully dries out in these guys, the leaves will very quickly start to deteriorate. But because they need watering quite regularly and they don't like to be fully dry ever, I would advise using a well-draining soil for these. So the soil's not soaking wet all the time because you're going to be doing smaller waters quite regularly. So it's better to have a well-draining soil so you can water them it drains through, the soil dries reasonably fast, you water again, rather than it being a very kind of muddy, compact soil that you water, and it retains that moisture for so long that the plant ends up with root rot. A great tool to invest in for these is a moisture probe. This way you know exactly when to water, you're not so much guessing. So definitely use your moisture probe. Basically when the moisture probe reads that the soil is maybe one or two numbers before dry, then you water again. Next thing to take into consideration with alocasias is the humidity. Now this does separate them again from a lot of other house plants. It makes them a tad more difficult. They're a lot more demanding on the humidity. So these are a tropical plant. They like it quite humid, um, 60 to 70% humidity. These guys would absolutely love even 80% is great for these guys. Obviously that is hard for you to kind of have in your home sometimes depending where you live in the world, plays a big role in this. If you live in a tropical climate, then you don't necessarily have to even worry about this. Your humidity is probably pretty good for these already. But if you live somewhere with lower humidity like I do, um, there are a couple of things you can do. So you can either mist your plant regularly. However, this is fairly inconsistent and you're gonna be raising and lowering the humidity very quickly, very regularly from misting. So misting is kind of, it's an option, but I wouldn't say it's the best option. Sometimes if you have lots of other house plants, you can clump them all together um, because they'll end up creating their own little microclimate amongst themselves with the water that evaporates from their leaves. That in, that it's, that in itself creates humidity. So when you clump all your house plants together, you can kind of raise the humidity amongst themselves. But probably the best and most consistent way to have high humidity for these plants is to get a humidifier. I actually run a humidifier with this alocasia. It's on my little uh, growing cabinet 
or growing table, whatever you call it, where I do run a humidifier. And I also have grow lights above this um, table as well for all these plants that I have on there. But I do run a humidifier for this plant and it, as you can see, it has kind of benefited this plant quite a lot because it's put out a decent amount of growth. But there is one thing you do have to be slightly careful with, with these and humidifiers. Now, yes, they like high humidity. The only issue is if you fill their leaves, they're quite velvety, hence the name green velvet. So the issue with that compared to alocasias that have very smooth waxy leaves is any moisture that condensates and collects on the leaf from your, humidif from your humidifier opposed to a plant that's glossy. A glossy leaf plant, the water is going to just run right off their leaf and the leaf will dry relatively quickly. These are almost like tissue where they almost hold on to the water. Uh, it kind of almost sticks to the leaf. And the issue with that is it can rot your leaves. You can get like a bit of a fungal infection happening on your leaf and it can rot. So yes, I use a humidifier for this and I would definitely recommend it. You do not want to have it going 24 seven though. Have it going maybe just during the day and turn it off at night time. So the plant has a time to dry its leaves off. Because if they're constantly wet, it's just gonna rot the leaves just because of the structure that these leaves have in their design. Now, when it comes to propagating these, um, these plants grow from bulbs. So to propagate them, it's not as simple as taking a cutting. You're gonna have to basically uproot your whole plant. So I would advise waiting until you are re like repotting this thing to even consider propagating. So firstly, you want allocation to be quite large and healthy with lots of growth um, because the bulbs this plant produces are basically like food reserves. The bulbs contain sugars, they contain starches, um, and that's like reserves for this plant that it can draw nutrients from. And a bigger plant is gonna just have more bulbs and you never wanna take all of the bulbs from your alocasia because as I was saying, these are its food reserves. If you, come, if you take all the bulbs at once, you'll deplete the plant of its reserves and you may actually lose your plant. It's recommended to wait till your alocasia is quite big and lush and it's able to produce multiple bulbs and maybe you just take a few of them and you leave some for the plant still. So the bulbs are located in the root system. So as I was saying, when you're gonna be repotting, um, look inside the root system, you'll see these bulbs kind of growing in and amongst the roots and you just kind of break a few of them off. With propagating them, the bulb's gonna have two ends. One end is long and pointy and one is kind of short and pointy. You wanna plant them in the soil. So the longer pointy end is the end that's buried in the soil and the top half, which is the shorter, stubbier end, is sticking out of the soil. Other than soil, you can actually use wet sphagnum moss. This also works quite well for propagating these. I would actually recommend sphagnum moss over soil um, for bulbs because sphagnum moss has antibacterial properties to it, so you're less likely to rot your bulbs because the bulbs do need to be kept wet and humid all the time, and you have a higher risk of fungal infection when it comes to soil and those particular conditions. So I would advise starting them off in wet sphagnum moss as bulbs, once they've actually grown roots and leaves, um, then you can move them into soil. Don't go overboard with fertilizer on these plants too. I've found fertilizing them twice a year is plenty. Uh, you wanna do it during the growing season. So do it in spring and do it again in autumn. You can use a liquid fertilizer that you mix with water like a fish or seaweed emulsion. You can use a slow release pelletized fertilizer if that's what you prefer. But again, only do it one to two times a year during the growing seasons of either spring, summer or autumn. I generally do it in spring and autumn. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but for those of you who would like to support my channel and maybe donate to it, why not click the link below and buy me a cup of coffee? Buy Me A Coffee is a website that allows you to donate small sums of money to the channel, which would be the equivalent of buying me a cup of coffee. So click that link below and buy me a cup of coffee. Anyways, now that's out of the way, back to the video. The other area that kind of deters people from alocasia is pests. Now, pests on these, um, they're kind of prone. <laughs> these ones particularly are kind of prone to spider mites as most alocasias are. Often when you bring an alocasia home from the nursery, um, within a few weeks of it being in your home, it's probably going to get spider mites. That's just something that seems to happen when you move them and they undergo a little bit of stress from change of environments. For, for whatever reason, they get spider mites. So I would advise um, using white oil. That's what I use for my plants. It's a petroleum jelly spray. 
you just give this, the leaves on the top and the underside a light spray. It coats the leaves in a bit of an oily substance, makes the leaves look a bit glossy. It lasts about two to three months of protection for your plant and it basically chokes off any uh, spider mites or other pest insects by clogging the spiracles on their body and suffocating them essentially. Having these under a humidifier will also reduce pests because a lot of these pests, create, a lot of these pest insects like spider mites don't like high humidity and moisture. They like things quite dry. So sometimes if you have a humidifier on your alocasia, that alone is enough to keep these pests away. I've found when you don't have them under a humidifier, you're more likely to have spider mite problems. Another thing regarding spider mites, going back to um, humidity and clumping your plants together for humidity, be careful with plants like alocasia, clumping them with your other plants, because like I said, they are prone to spider mites you could spread them to your other plants if they're in contact with them. So I would maybe wait until you've had your alocasia for a while and you know that it doesn't have spider mites or it's had a treatment of white oil or something. Or if you wanna have all your plants clumped together with a humidifier, then that's perfectly fine. But if you're clumping your plants together in relatively dry conditions, which I get, that's why you're doing it, to reduce the humidity. But just make sure that they're pest free because dry conditions promote spider mite. So general maintenance for these, um, there are a couple of things. Firstly, again, you don't wanna let water accumulate on the leaves for too long if you are using a humidifier on them. Don't leave the leaves dripping wet 24 seven. Give them a period to dry. Secondly, um, if you're not using a humidifier, there is gonna be a lot of dust collecting on these leaves because they're, they're not even that slippery. So they will collect more dust than like smoother leaves do. So you wanna keep them wiped down nice and clean. Just use a wet cloth or something or a tissue. Um, thirdly, snip off any dying leaves and you will get leaves that die quite regularly with alocasias, especially this one. Uh, the thing with alocasias is as they're pushing up a brand new leaf, it drains a lot of energy from the plant to do so. So often what happens when the new leaf is coming up, the oldest leaf starts to die and fall off. You wanna snip that off as soon as you notice it's dying because uh, it's just drawing energy from the plant while it's still attached to it. The earlier you snip it off, the sooner that plant can divert the energy up to the new growth. And oftentimes I've also found that when you notice your alocasia putting up a new leaf, definitely don't let the soil dry out. I know I said generally, like you don't wanna let the soil go fully dry anyway. Um, and if you're able to keep that up consistently, then that's great. But if you're someone who occasionally might let it go a few days before you water it when it needs, when it, needs it, um, just kind of be more mindful when it is putting a new leaf up because it's gonna need that water. Like I said, a new leaf is very draining on the alocasia and they're quite a thirsty plant. And I've found sometimes if you don't let it go too dry with the new leaf coming up, you're less likely to lose old leaves from the new leaf. And that's how you get alocasias like this with lots of leaves. I have some alocasia which honestly, they go between three and five leaves and they never seem to progress any more than that. Um, it's just the way they function, I guess. Or it could be that I'm just not watering them enough when they're putting a new leaf up and so they almost sacrifice their old leaf to produce a new one. Kind of annoying, <laughs> but that's just alocasias. And the amount of water you give them often will revolve around the amount of lighting they're receiving. So if you're giving them high lighting and they're in high humidity as well with the high lighting, they're gonna obviously grow much quicker. They're gonna push up bigger leaves more regularly. So they're gonna be more demanding on the amount of water they take in. And they're gonna drink water and dry their pot out quicker. So often when they're under higher lighting and higher humidity, they're gonna be needing much more regular watering than one that's in slightly lower lighting. So given the fact that this plant needs high humidity, high lighting, it's kind of prone to spider mites, kind of picky with its watering regime, I'm gonna give this plant a ranking between intermediate and hard. It's not the hardest plant to keep. There are definitely plenty of house plants out there that are very much harder than this. But I would say you need to be semi-experienced to keep these to the point where they're very lush and green and thriving. So for that reason, this plant gets a ranking of the level between intermediate and hard. Right, well, that's my video on the Alocasia Green Velvet, also known as the Alocasia miscalitiana. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and give the channel a subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Video.